And yet, before I have the honor and the privilege of introducing our keynote, I get to give you the, um, the pro-life update, as I've been so blessed to do each year at the kickoff rally for the last several years as we've had 40 Days for Life. And you know, God is writing history among us, and every single one of us is a part of the history that he's writing. When we look back to the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Word of God the Bible is full from start to finish of story after story of God working through his people. And here we are 2,000 years after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we, as Christians, are his hands and his feet. We are his hands and his feet. And he is continuing to write history through each one of us in the mighty, mighty things that he is doing. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a recap for what he has been doing here in Dallas, Texas, through 40 Days for Life, with kind of some significant dates, including tonight's date. First, going back, 40 Days for Life, as we all know, began in Bryan College Station, where our keynote speaker tonight is from. began in the fall of 2004. They thought they were only going to do it one time and one time only. And yet, our director of sidewalk counseling here in Dallas, Carol Stewart's son, was an Aggie who participated in that 40 Days for Life. And we knew that the Aaron's abortion facility up here in Dallas was undergoing construction to be an ambulatory surgical center to do late-term abortion. And then told his mother, Carol, and Carol said, we've got to fight this with prayer. We've got to do the same 40 days for life. Went down to College Station, got the training on what to do, and we did, and Dallas did, the second 40 days for life vigil ever. The um, December of 2004 to January, right before the anniversary of Roe vs. Wedding, 2005, through the winter. 2004 to 2005. And the people at Bryan College Station were like, oh, we didn't get that. And the next, the next day, we Wisconsin called. And Carol Stewart went up to Wisconsin and talked to them about doing 40 Days for Life. And David Beerwright, the National Director of 40 Days for Life, has said, if Dallas didn't do, if, if Carol Stewart hadn't been listening to the Holy Spirit and responded, and Dallas didn't do vigil number two, we may not be seeing what we're seeing internationally now. With over 10,000 lives saved in a number of cities internationally participating in 40 Days for Life. Praise be to God. So 2007, fall of 2007, was the first nationally coordinated 40 Days for Life in 89 cities. Of course, Dallas participated in the fall of 2007. And one year later, in the summer of 2008, we got the word that Aaron's abortion facility, site of the second 40 Days, was closing its doors forever. Between 2008 and 2009, we found out that Aaron's abortion facility, where so much innocent life had been lost, had been leveled to the ground. Leveled to the ground. Still, if you drive by an LBJ, you will see it all over ground. Leveled to the ground. And on Tuesday night, September 22nd, 2009, six years ago, we decided that we would be holding the 40 Days for Life 24-7 vigil at Robinson. Get that name? <laughs> Robinson <laughs> Abortion Facility. Birth Choice of Dallas had just opened its doors, brand new. Pregnancy Resource Center directly diagonally across the street from Robinson's abortion facility. September 22nd, 2009, at the kickoff rally in the parking lot of the Birth Choice, looking across the street at Robinson, our keynote speaker that night, was Father Paul Weinberg. And he had a message. He had a profound message for us that night. Because Aaron had closed, and we had gotten the news that he was leveled to the ground. And it was on the vigil of the feast of St. Padre Pio. Tomorrow is the feast, September 23rd, of St. Padre Pio. And Father Weinberg told us the story 
And I had never heard it before. I never heard it before. Padre Pio, for those who don't know, is one of our many in the cloud of witnesses who received the stigmata of the Lord. Okay? Prove it. He had the wounds of Christ. Five. And Father Weinberg taught us and told us. And this was scientifically documented by videotaped scientists and doctors that in the last days of Padre Pio's life, as he was dying, the doctors and the scientists documented that his stigmata began to dry up. The bleeding was beginning to stop to the point where when Padre Pio died, there was not a trace of that bloodshed. Not only had all of the wounds closed, but they were healed. There was not even a scar, not a trace. And Father Weinberger told us, <coughs> just as this happened with St. Padre Pio, just as we have not seen the first abortion facility since the 40 Days for Life vigil was held, closed, the bleeding stopped, at Aaron's abortion facility, closed, leveled to the ground without a trace. Let us pray as we go into this 40 days for life and look across the street at this place, this 40 days ending on November 1st. Let us pray that at the end of this 40 days, just you know, open it. He said, let us pray that at the end of this 40 days, that facility will close and it too will be leveled to the ground without a trace. Amen. It took three and a half years from when we did the first 40 days at Aaron and for it to close, right? So sometimes we have to be a little bit of patience. Um, so we did it. We, we took it with all of our heart and we adopted the whole idea that we are blessed. We are. We are blessed. We had 13 abortion facilities in Dallas, Texas. The city where Roe v. Wade began with the Roe case back in 1970 and the tragic Supreme Court decision on January 22, 1973. When we started praying out inside of the abortion, outside of the abortion facilities in January of 1990, 25 years ago, there were 13 abortion facilities in Dallas. By this time, in 2009, there were five. And the, the spiritual significance of this, that we had five five wounds on our city. We were praying for the, the bloodshed to stop. During that 40 days, what did we find out? During, what God has been doing during, during 40 days for life vigils the last few years to give us encouragement that he is moving mountains. During 40 days for life, we learned from someone who came to pray at the Robinson's facility at night, Spanish-speaking, humble young woman, she knew the location of the new Southwestern abortion facility and shared it with the person she was praying with at 40 Days for Life. That's how we found out where it was before it opened so that we could be there from the moment that this facility opened during 40 Days for Life. So fair enough, abortion facility closes, the ground zero of abortion in Texas closes during 40 days for life of 2009. Southwestern opens. What do we do? During that vigil, we said, okay, we finished our vigil at Robinson's, but we, we got to respond to this, and we did another 40 days for life, mini, December 12th to January 22nd, mini 40 days for life from 09 to 10. Again, we wait. We pray. We're faithful. We're all doing the work that God has called us to do. What does God do? What does God do to show His faithfulness to us? Takes a while to sell an abortion facility, right? Fairmount. Ash Wednesday of 2011. Not the day before. Not the day after. Ash Wednesday of 2011, the first day of the spring, 40 days for life, Fairmount 
is leveled to the ground. Fair enough. We've got so much hope. God is moving and he's moving mountains and closing and leveling these places. What else happened during the spring of 2011? Legislative victories in Austin. Sonogram law is passed. Planned Parenthood is defunded by millions of dollars. And right up the street, where 40 Days for Life is being held in Sherman, Texas, Ramona Trevino, the manager of that Planned Parenthood, had her reversion, conversion through divine mercy, left that facility, is now a full-time pro-life advocate and speaker. And that Planned Parenthood closed. Praise God. That summer, David B. Wright, National Director of 40 Days for Life, comes to Dallas for a victory celebration, and we all have a chat. And he said, you know, the 40th anniversary of our D-Wade is coming up in 2013. I think God has a special message for our movement. I keep hearing Exodus 2013. The year 2013 will be 40 years. I shared that with a pastor friend of mine, and he said, David, do you know what Bible verse Exodus 2013 is? And he said, no. He opened his Bible, and we all know it. Thou shalt not kill. Exodus 2013. We didn't know what God was going to be doing in 2013. We had no idea. But what we did know was that we had to adopt that message and that we had to proclaim it. And all right, I've got some props, right? David Holder says to me in 2013 as we do this massive thou shalt not kill. He's a camera. 40th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. We need to go on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, January 22nd, and pray at 3 o'clock at the federal building for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And I said, date. We had been at the prayer there with us. All right. <laughs> I said, they, if we're going to pray anywhere on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, we're going to every remaining abortion facility in this city before we get to the federal building. And so what we did, we got a few of us together, and we stopped at each chapel, at White Rose, at Bird Choice. We prayed at each chapel of the, the, the pregnancy resource centers that are near the abortion facility. And we did. We went to all five of them, and then there were five of them. And we landed at the federal building in 2013. What? We all know. We all know what happened. The epic, epic, unforeseen, unprecedented battle for life between the culture of death and the culture of life in the capital in Austin in the summer of 2013 when the amazing incredible HB2 was passed. Praise be to God. What happened after that? Once again, during, <coughs> during 40 Days for Life, right near the very end, October 31st, 2013, was when we got the first wave of victory from that HB2. When we got the word that night that the Fifth Circuit had ruled that the hospital privileges provision of HB2 would go into effect. October 31st, November 1st, 2013, abortion facilities across the state of Texas do not kill children. Hands that have been shedding innocent blood will pull back, including here in Dallas. North Park was the first one to go. We are down, down since 2013. Back in 2011, there were 41 abortion facilities in the state of Texas. Today, because of the 2011 legislation, the 2013 legislation, even with the roller coaster of the courts, today, 19 abortion facilities left in the state of Texas. Nine are ambulatory surgical centers. We have gone, just as last year, this time last year, we had four abortion facilities still open that we were having to cover with prayer in Dallas, Texas. One year later, praise be to God, Two. We're down to two. We've gone from 13 in 1990 down to two. From last year, four. <laughs> and what else did God do last year? Yes, when Planned Parenthood saw the writing on the wall 
And they opened up their new facility down on West Virginia Drive. This time last year, a day, September 23rd, a year ago, David Neal was back in town. We had a historic opportunity to meet, meet with Dr. Tony Evans, pastor of Oakland Bible Fellowship. Chris Wheel is here tonight. The, the networking that has gone on, the coming together of the pro-life community, especially at the New Planned Parenthood on West Virginia Drive, is unprecedented in our city. Sean Martin is here from Online for Life. The networking that all of us are doing together to end this tragedy, to build a culture of life. Jonathan Pitts out there every day. The, the prayer presence at the Planned Parenthood down on West Virginia Drive is constant since we held the 40 Days for Life there last year. So we met Dr. Tony Evans. Tony Evans is going to be speaking at the North Texas March for Life rally for the very first time this year on January 16, 2015. The body of Christ comes together to come back as great people. Amen. What else did God do during 40 Days for Life last year? So we can only anticipate, right, that he's going to do great things during 40 Days for Life this year. Last year, October 2nd, we get a ruling from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in the midst of storms, crazy, crazy storms, power outages everywhere. We get a ruling within minutes of the ruling breaking news. We also have a rain map. He's giving up to you, right? showing us his faithfulness. That the Fifth Circuit upheld the ambulatory surgical center provision. Okay, yes, it's going through the court. As never before, we have to pray during this 40 days for life that that case makes its way to the Supreme Court. Amen. So, yes, he gave us that hope. He gave us that rainbow. And the other thing that he did last year, amidst lives being saved, moms being helped, people being healed, all the work that's going on all the time, but during 40 days for life, and there's so much prayer that's dedicated and focused and so much sacrificing going on. Yes, God arranged last year near the end of 40 days for life on October 30th. God arranged for our director of solid counseling, Joanne Underwood, myself, and who? Father Paul Weinberger, to meet in person, meet, shake hands with, look in the eyes of, and tell him we were praying for him. Yes, Lamar Robinson, abortionist at Robinson's abortion facility. Let him know, gave him a copy of Dr. Bernard Nathanson's biography, The Hand of God, a converted abortionist. That happened during 40 Days of Life last year. Robinson has since closed. He tried to go and open the and reopen in Norfolk. Lost his privileges. He is done. He is done. What did God do? What did God do? He moved out on November 25th. And you just don't know, you know, God's timing. But remember what day Fairmont was leveled to the ground? First day of 40 days for life, Ash Wednesday, 2011. God waits, not the day before, and not the day after, or two days before, or two days after, or a week later. God waits for Robinson's abortion facility to be leveled to the ground without a trace on January 17th, 2015, while the body of Christ is marching for life on the road to victory in downtown Dallas. The day, while we're marching for victory, Robinson is being leveled to the ground. Do you guys get that? <laughs> Right? 
see them all over this. And here we are starting on Feast of Padre Pio again tomorrow. Let's pray as for the saint's intercession for an end to the killing. We're down to two. We have only two to go here in Dallas. We're going to continue to network. And never before the body of Christ coming together. And never before to help moms choose life. Until that day that every life is protected. Every life is protected. Every mom is supported and loved. It's every Everybody who's worked in the abortion industry has made that conversion and come out. Abby Johnson has, like Dr. Bernard Bernard Nathan has, like Ramona Trevino has. We'll soon hear from Dr. Haywood Robinson just that he has come out. Just a couple quick other updates that we can just rejoice in what God is doing. Yes, with all of this activity going on. We have seen in the, in the, just in just in a one year period from 12 to 13, we saw a 16 percent drop in the number of abortions in Dallas. Over the last five year period, that number in Dallas, Dallas County, 25 percent drop in the number of abortions. In the state of Texas, in the state of Texas that's a 16 percent drop. So again, it's not like right. We think. Dallas is better, you know, than the rest of the state, but just look at the numbers. <laughs> anyway, praise God for what he's doing. He is doing amazing, amazing things. All right, so tonight, we, yes, we did. Okay, just so everyone knows, we did reach out to Lamar Robinson, see if he might possibly be, you know, willing to come and meet Dr. Haber. <laughs> not today. Okay. But we can be praying and never for it. And again, David Holder has a new bear, <laughs> a panda bear. And he said, you know, what should we name him? And he actually suggested like a possibility. And I said, you know what? In honor of the conversion of Dr. Hayward Robinson, and as a reminder to all of us to be praying for the conversion of heart of Lamar Robinson, <laughs> Before I introduce Dr. David Robinson, one more amazing thing about today. Because God writes, He writes, this is true. Today is the birthday of Dr. David Robinson. Oh. And so, we tonight we will celebrate his birthday, his birthday before we head into 40 days of fasting. <laughs> and yes, we, for those who can join us to kick off hour number one, from midnight to one, please do come join us. Um, as we head into these 40 days, just to pray, fast, offer sacrifices, be there, the power of your prayers God uses to save lives, to close the abortion facilities, to level them to the ground without a trace, so that all the bleeding will come to a stop. Rare blue, right? Color of life. But today is also another very important person in the pro life movement for today. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. Dr. Robinson is here. It's his birthday. Today is the birthday of Norma McCoy. The Jane Roe of Rivers' Way. Right? The Jane Roe of Rivers' Way. Started here in Dallas, started in Dallas, was in Dallas. Norma worked in the abortion industry. She came out, she's fully converted, she's dedicated her life to the overturning of this case. And so tonight, yes, we will celebrate Dr. Robinson's birthday, we will celebrate Norma's birthday, we will celebrate victory. The victory that Jesus has already won and that we will soon realize and we will see it. We will see it in our lifetime. Amen? Amen. 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 God is on the move. He is on the move. And He's calling all of us to just continue walking with Him and doing it. Open to promptings of the Holy Spirit to do exactly what He's asking you to do. Each one of us, each one of us have a role to play. We're all members of the body of Christ and we all have a part to play. And so I applaud you for all that you have done and will continue to do, especially as we see each other on the sidewalk during the next 40 days, and until, until that day that we see it. We call it exposure and impairment and on the summer with the videos and everything else. I mean, God is on the move. I've never before.
right there. Okay, so now to introduce to you Dr. Hayward Robinson. We're so excited to hear your message tonight. Dr. Hayward Robinson is a graduate medical associate family medicine doctor at College Station, Texas. First place of 40 days to life. Affiliated with St. Joseph Medical Center. He earned his Bachelor of Science degree from the California Institute of Technology, followed by a medical doctor degree at the University of California at Irvine, and finally a family practice residency at Martin Luther King Charles Drew Medical Center in Los Angeles. During his residency, Dr. Robinson received abortion training while on the obstetrics and gynecology service. Discussion regarding the ethics of these procedures or instruction regarding alternatives was not part of the training. Performing abortion requires so little effort. Everyone was doing it, and they didn't seem to have a problem with it, so why should he? His experience provided the opportunity for him to meet a lovely lady by the name of Maureen, who later would become his wife. As their relationship progressed, moonlighting together in abortion clinics was commonplace. Money became a mutual motivator, especially since the pay was substantial and it was quite evident how their abortion training could be profitable. Shortly after marriage and completing their residency program, Dr. Robinson and his wife Noreen came to the saving knowledge of Christ and were soon convicted by God's word which exposed the living lie they led as hired killers of preborn children. Today, the converted Dr. Robinson has served on the 40 Days for Life news, uh, Board of Directors, and he and his wife Noreen share their testimony nationwide to expose the facts of the abortion industry and to be a voice for life and the unborn. Please help me welcome Dr. Hayward Robinson. 